Okay. So here we are back. We were interrupted by a phone call. Here we are back with Marty Wurst. Hey. And we're talking about the uh, the phenomenon of open mics. Marty Wurst is a guy who does uh, reviews of open mics in Los Angeles. So this is going to be kind of talking about the cultural phenomenon and also making it a uh, kind of a user's manual <laughs> for people out there in L.A. who are trying to. I'm a veteran of the open mics. I've done uh, probably, I've gone up every night for four years. And now I'm starting to uh, transition into uh, book shows and a little tiny bit of paid work here and there. And uh, so I'm actually moving what I hope is towards a career in stand-up comedy. We will see. You know, it's a tough road, and a lot of it isn't up to you, you know what I mean? It's not up to you at all. It's up to uh, the fates, the winds. Right, right. You know, do you have something that is special? Did you uh, put aside a certain amount of time where you were... You, uh, trying to determine whether yeah. you're going to be a comedian and just do it. Yeah, for... I gave myself like three years. If I didn't get a check or cause a riot, yeah, I figure I would quit. But I did cause a riot. I caused a riot more than once. <laughs> really? And yes. And uh, sometimes I don't just do comedy. I do performance art. Okay. So before I was a comedian, I was a performance artist. Okay. So and it, it comes from I come from an art background which is where artists were abandoning their uh, uh, the painting and the object and said, this is, this is bourgeois, we're not going to do the, the object anymore. We're going to just do things with our bodies, ourselves, in a gallery setting. And then the performance art was born. And it, to a certain extent, uh, punk rock came out of that uh, and was heavily influenced by it in its origins in New York in 74, 75. The performance artists were also around then. Patti Smith was a performance artist. Right. So the early days of punk rock were, were influenced a lot by performance art. So anyway, that's what I am. And I decided, well, let's, you know, uh, Andy Kaufman was a performance artist. Right. Okay, so that's where I come from. So I'm Andy Kaufman kind of inspired uh, comedian. And uh, so I, you know, did did get paid and get flown to Alaska recently. Here and there, I get paid a little tiny bit of money. I get enough to, to let me know maybe I'm in the right place, you know, because I'm an older guy starting out. It's harder. I've got more to talk about. Right. I've got more heartbreak. So, uh, but the open mic thing, the open mic phenomenon is even in New York, I guess, 24 hours, you can go to open mics. Right, right, in right. L.A., it's between usually 4 to about 9 or 10. Right. With a few exceptions. And a few exceptions. There's the late night at the Lexington down there. Yeah. Uh, what about that one bar out there in Orange County? Uh, Anchor Bar? Anchor Bar. Yeah, so that one runs until That's about still midnight. That's still late. You know, but mostly peak time for... Or five to about nine or ten. Yeah. In LA, peak open mic time. And you start. When did you start uh, doing reviews of open mics? Uh, I think like two years ago. I was just taking pictures of open mics before I even started reviewing them, and I thought, oh, I might as well just use these and write my little Leonard Maltin style reviews, <laughs> like really lazy and short. Right. Yeah, you know, with just the basic information, just, uh, yeah, the times, drink minimum, how much, uh, uh, or, yeah, the host's names, what kind of place, uh, parking, and uh, just general outline. Intense negativity and crazy people? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I try not to, like, talk about the people that are performing there, because that has nothing to do with the open mic, but every once in a while I'll go somewhere where it just drives me insane. And I vent a little bit, and it, but I try not to crap on the actual open mic unless the host is going out of his way to be a jerk. Yeah, you know, there's, a, you know, that's the way that it is. Some some places are crazy. I know there's an open mic that I go to where there are a lot of crazy people, and there's a crazy person that yells through my entire set sometimes. Right. At one of my open mics that I still go to a lot, and uh, there's a there was once I was in an open mic early on, and there was this crazy homeless person that kept following me around, and he smelled really bad. Yeah. And uh, then he actually went up on stage, and he was reading jokes 
off of these pieces of paper that were all worn out and he could barely see his own jokes oh, wow. that he'd written on there and they were all frayed and some of that. But it was actually really good. The guy was like a shower and a shave, you know, a way to change of clothes away from like getting maybe booked somewhere. But uh, he need to do the more than just you have to memorize the jokes. You can't just read them off a piece of paper. But yeah. uh, anyway, he was, you know, he's a nut. But he could write some good jokes. Another place to go to check in one of the places where, no matter where you are, if you're looking for open mic, is badslava.com. Right, right. B a d s l a v a dot com, just like it sounds, spelled just like it sounds, and that has open mic directory of all over the world, and in L A. And the thing also that I do, that I look for, that I like, is I kind of you know, avoid the uh, comedian open mics and go where there's just general weirdos, poets, yeah, and musicians, musicians yeah. you know, general freaks that go up and scream and do weird things and talk or whatever. And then I guess there's three basic kind of open mic performers. There's the musicians, then there's the comedians, yeah. and then there's the, no, there's the poets, there's four, so I guess there's four, and then there's general freaks. We have no idea what they're doing. <laughs> they don't list it like that, though. <laughs> freaks. <laughs> General freaks, you know, guys that play the saw and scream and strange girls that play the ukulele and talk about their vaginas that aren't actually trying to be funny, that are just there to sing songs about their vaginas on the ukulele and have no idea that they're comedians. Uh, there's a guy in L.A. who's a wonderful uh, comic, but he really has no idea that he's a comedian at all. He's just a guy they play songs he takes voice lessons and stuff like that and he is a uh, a musician you know so he's a serious musician but he's incredibly funny so i've thought of booking him i need in fact i need to book him right. on some comedy shows but he hangs out with musicians who learns to play the guitar takes voice lessons does headshots uh and he, we're actually being attacked by a squirrel right now. Squirrel. Join the open mic. There's a squirrel out here where we're sitting in this uh, hallway, kind of alleyway, <laughs> doing this open, this mic. But, so go ahead. Tell us uh, why you decided to, to do open mics. What, what are the open mics in L.A. that mainly you've reviewed? Oh, man, there's, there's way too many. Like, what are uh, the best? Like, what's the, the best? best? I guess it depends if you uh, want to pay $5 for a mic or one drink minimum or there's the free ones. It, a lot of different things to consider because you know most of right. them are three minutes in LA. Do you want to get longer time and drive farther? Uh, but I think my favorites in LA would be uh, right now um, uh, with Love Marketing Cafe, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is near downtown LA. There's mm -hmm. uh, um, let's see. I mean, I always love the potluck if you can get up at the comedy store. It's right. always pretty exciting. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, some of the five dollar mics I've kind of shied away from because I just get depressed if I go too much. Like Marty's, that was yeah. my very first open mic. That was my first open mic too. Oh, I started wow. out there. Marty's can build really tough comics because yeah. it's a really tough place full of a lot of. It was when I was there. A lot of it seems better now. It's full of a lot of really negative people. There was one sociopath that was there actually that was uh, manipulating people. And uh, it was pretty bad. I was actually an early host. I was a, early in my career. I was a host yeah. at Marty's. And uh, there was just like, you know, people threatening to fight me and all this stuff. And oh, I'm man. just like, you know, this place is crazy. But, you know, it made me tough. You know what yeah. I mean? It makes you tough. And that's good. But the thing about the one of the reasons, the one of the reasons I don't go to comedy open mics or try to avoid them is because you never really know if something that you say is funny or not. Yeah, you know? that's true. Um, either uh, you're with a group of comedians that just don't care about you or don't care to listen because they're on their phones, or and there's a good chance if they're you know uh, comics that are your friends, they might just be overly supportive. So you can't really yeah. gauge what's really working. Yeah, it's like they're they're gonna. And if you're at a comedy open mic, that means you're there and the audience are just other comics. So they're the comedians, not always, but generally. This, you know, if you say something, when you generalize, you're, you know, 60, 40 to 60 percent right, you know, and that's all you can really be. Some people might say I'm 90 percent or 100 percent right, but basically, if you're at a comedian open mic, the people will laugh if they perceive that you are higher up on the food chain mm. than them right. in comedy. 
or more popular socially than them <laughs> in the comedy world, right, okay? Right. And then, you know, the other day I had somebody uh, describe me as a heavy hitter before I went up. And the other one was like, really, me? And, and then I'm like, okay, well, that's good. I'll take it. But, you know, does that mean people are going to laugh at what I do? You know, and so I do them infrequently so people aren't completely used to my material. So hopefully it's the first time anyone's heard it yeah. when they're there. And because the open mic crew, you know, changes in L.A. It depends on where you're going. There's ones in Orange County. There's yeah. ones in the Valley. And there's ones in L.A. And there's ones in downtown L.A. But, you know, and there are ones that are free. And a lot of those, if you find ones that are free, go there. Go yeah. to those. But a lot of times that can also mean you wait a long time. Yeah, two, two hours, two and a half hours. There's uh, a place called the Greenway Theater. I don't know if that's is that still going on. I haven't heard of that one. It's yeah. a used to be. I don't know if it's still there, but it's a slam poetry mic. Okay. If you know what slam poetry oh, is, yeah, yeah. if you don't look it up on YouTube, you'll either be disgusted or annoyed, or some people think it destroys uh, poetry. But it is is and was still a cultural phenomenon like open mics, and it's poetry that's meant to be performed rather than read. Some people saw it as the death of poetry. Other people saw it as the birth of poetry. And it can be horrible, cringeworthy bad. And it can also be brilliant. True, yeah. But there is, the Greenway Theater is a place over on Fairfax, and you used to have to wait in line like three hours to get there really early to get on the list. And you had to run and get on the list. And there were just people that somehow always managed to get on the list before you who didn't do wait in line and uh, who had like, you know, credit there or whatever, thought they ran the place or owned the place and were brilliant poets and poets, but really they were just saying platitudes from uh, greeting cards and were just hideous. Yeah. But anyway, there at Poetry Mics, you'll notice if you're a Poetry Mics, this is how they applaud. Everyone does this, like this. Yeah. They all do their fingers like this. If you're ever at open mic and someone does this, that means it's I do that sometimes because I sometimes perform stuff that's halfway between poetry and comedy and people will do this you know and that's that's just like a, I mean that's been going on since the late 60s or something right well, that was yeah. like the beatnik that was or? the beatnik thing yeah that was since the that, that's not that's the late that's the late 50s the mid to late 50s is when that started that's when the poetry open mic started probably the first episode of the open mic was the beatnik thing so I guess really you can probably credit the beatniks yeah. for this the origin of the open mic in uh, probably New York, Greenwich Village, places like that for where people are actually doing poetry open mics. So that was probably the first thing. You'd buy a coffee. And the reason these are done, too, is why they're in so many businesses. They're in coffee shops or in restaurants because they're not getting any business. And as soon as they get a cheap sound system in there, they can charge people, make sure people buy, like, uh, you know, $4 in junk. It's better... Okay, there's three kinds of open mics. There's the, you just give them five bucks and your five bucks is gone. Right. You get your slot. There's a free open mic. Find those, go to them. Then there's the one where you have to buy something at the cafe or the bar, which is much better than just giving them the five bucks because at least you get, like, the banana and the cookie and the cup of coffee. <laughs> Who's buying the banana at the open mics? You know, at least you get something <laughs> rather than just having your $5 go down the rabbit hole. But certain open mics I just go and pay because I get up quick and get out of there. I'm done. I did my set for the night, and I can run off and go to the, if I have a book show or something like that, that I can go to and you get warmed up, yeah. you know? Especially where people are going to be judging me, you know, and going, well, we're going to have you on this show again. Are you good enough? I like to, like, warm up somewhere beforehand. So what about you? What are your preferences with mics besides what you've already said? Um, I mean, I definitely like uh, five minutes or more if I can. I right. like, uh, yeah, I don't mind the one drink minimum. I'd rather do that than five dollars. At uh, least you get a drink. At yeah. least you get some because you're going to be, you're going to go to a bar or a cup, or have a drink, or you're going to go to a coffee shop, check your email, and sit around for a while, yeah. and have buy a banana and a cup of coffee anyway. So you might as well be getting mic time too. Yeah. On top of that, you know. Yeah, and I, de I definitely prefer a sign-up list over lottery, just so I know where I stand. Oh, lotteries are nightmares. Yeah, it's a, it's brutal if you're waiting around, and then sometimes they cut it off, and that's just like a kick in the pants. Yeah, because you wait there for three hours. Okay, so this is the scam. This is there's all kinds of lottery scams in L.A. 
and feel free to break it any time, Marty. Okay. But if you go to an open mic and they say this is a lottery, there's all kinds of problems right there just in the game. First kind of lottery you're going to have, you can have the completely honest lottery yeah. where things are being done above board. They really are pulling. You put write your name on a piece of paper, it goes into a hat or a bucket or whatever. And then they pull out random names. And one of the reasons that they do that is so that it creates an audience for the people. And they, you, cause you may or may not go up. You may or may not know if you're going to go up or when you're going to go up. Yeah. So you've got to sit around. But you could be sitting around for four hours to get three minutes of time. You know? Echoes Under Sunset was like that. It was just a oh, nightmare. Man. Yeah, that was packed. It, it was just a nightmare. You <laughs> never know like, you're going to go up. And there's more comedians hanging yeah. out in the other room than in the actual theater. Yeah, I had jokes stolen there at uh, – uh, once someone stole one of my jokes at uh, – uh, echoes under sunset, and then he went and practiced it in front of me at the mic at the. Uh, uh, Did he know? Yeah, I don't know, man. Just so arrogant. You say, "Oh, Mark Selzer's a nobody. I'll steal his joke. Who He's cares?" Asking you for tags. You know, it's just unbelievable. Yeah, not asking me for tags, and I'll definitely give everyone tags. And I, some people, some people love it. Some people hate it. Some people are like, "Oh man, that's so good. Thank you, thank you so much." And other people are just insulted if you try to help them with their joke. But I just try to be nice, just generally to everyone, and try to be as helpful as I can. And uh, but you know, there's all these weird things in comedy. But yeah. If, okay, so lottery, so you never know. And then the other, even worse kind of lottery, my advice, walk out the door, is that the people that are running it are pulling a name out of the hat and saying, yes, here is my friend. It, it could be your name on there. You yeah. could have been waiting there four hours. But they say their friend and put their friend up, who they say it's there, and then they put it in their pocket and you don't see it. Yeah. So you don't know that your name or who else, whose name was pulled out. They said the name of their friend or their girlfriend or the girl that just blew them or the guy that just blew them or whatever or yeah. the transsexual that just blew them <laughs> is is whoever did whatever to get whatever kind of favor from them, their friend, their girlfriend, their buddy, the comedian they're trying to impress to get a slot somewhere else yeah you know favors are done by favors in uh, LA so if you see that or you suspect that my advice unless you're on the inside just get the fuck out of that yeah well I'll even say it right now because I was telling you I was thinking about going to the the improv after this uh -huh. and uh, I mean my first couple years of being around that place I was getting so upset because they would yeah, they would put up put up all their employees, and when they right. go up, they'd act like they didn't even want to do comedy. It's right. like, dude, I want to be up there. Why don't you like work out some jokes? And they'd just be like, oh, I don't, I didn't have anything planned to do right. up here. Yeah, well, don't waste our time then. You know, mm. write some jokes, people. You know, I hate those people who go up and go, yeah, I like to smoke pot. <laughs> Oh, you're nice to smoke some pot. You, <laughs> know? Like, you know you're at an open mic. What right are now? you guys drinking? You know, those kind of comics and those kind of people. I hate that junk. I mean, if they're good, they're good. You can make anything good if you, you know what you're doing. Yeah. But anyway, so the way to do a lotto, if it's done honestly, is that everyone puts their name in the bucket, and then you're going to pull the name out and you read it, and you put the name down in a public place next to the bucket on a table so everyone can come and see the name that you pulled out is the name that got called. It's like an overhead projection of you all know, the names. So. That would be the only way to do it. That's if I was running a lot of, yeah. if I was ever at the improv or whatever, and they give me a, a slot, you know, running a mic, that's what I would, that's how I would do it because, you know, that's just garbage. And then there's, then there's places where you pay. Yeah. Okay, and there's like the worst, I'm sorry, uh, is the Ha Ha Cafe, yeah. where it's $5 for 5 minutes, $10 for 10 minutes. Yeah, if you're Mr. Moneybags, you can get your 10 minutes. Yeah, and then beyond that, there's open mics. Listen, a lot of the shows that you see in L.A., let me say to the consumer right now, and also to the comedians, many of the shows in L.A., whether it's at the Comedy Store or anywhere else, are open mics 
where people have paid to gone up and are called bringer shows. Right. Those are basically open mics where people have paid to, they're basically paying, they're tricking their friends into paying to, for them to get on stage. Okay. They're basically playing $30, $40 a minute because you're going to have to bring eight people and you're going to have to, uh, they're, each one of those people is going to spend 40, 50 bucks. So you're basically paying. Forty or fifty dollars a minute. Yeah, and then uh, depending how many people you bring, or I guess depending on the the booker, if yeah. they're uh, total Nazis too, they'll right. start uh, docking you time. They'll take out minutes from your set yeah. or threaten to not put you up at all. I know people who've gone to open mics and brought three people, and they said that wasn't enough. You can't go up. Right. And then they, and their people have waited around for them to go up. I know people that have eighty dollars to uh, Booker and then they won't go up, uh, uh, they won't uh, give the money back and won't let them go up. I've, I've heard every nightmare about bringer shows, but those are a lot basically open mics and there'll be hopefully someone on there that's a uh, regular comedian that can bring people in and also people that can make people laugh. And then there's there's flappers where you go there yeah. and they, I'm going to name names in this, I hope oh. this is going to make me make me enemies all over town, I guess. But uh, but everyone hates me already anyway, so whatever. Well, you can always change it a little bit, like Carbra <laughs> Balladay or something. Well, you know, Flappers, you go to Flappers, and they have a lot of shows where basically you go there to their audition. So I guess they're trying to make sure you've at least written a joke, which is okay. And then they want you to bring, I think it's uh, over, you bring five people, four or five people. And then you get more than three minutes. You bring three people, you get you get the same three minutes. You bring no people, you get the same three minutes. You bring four people, you get four minutes. Five people, five minutes. Eight people, eight minutes. No people, uh, three minutes. And if you bring 20 people, you still get eight minutes. And then there are people that just buy tickets to shows or have a lot of money. I know this one dirtbag who uh, buys just buys tickets from bringer shows pays or just ask them what's the upfront price just gives them you know 80 bucks or 100 bucks or 150 bucks or whatever or buys tickets from them buy 10 tickets that's another kind of bringer show buy these 10 tickets for 10 dollars each and right. they do that and then it's you know it's just really difficult i have some open mics where i have some privileges where i can go and get it up early one thing, one place I do go is the Pig and Whistle. It's five bucks. Yeah. It's musicians. I go on musician night where there's mostly musicians, and those people. And the thing is, it's right by my house. I live right here in Hollywood. I walk down there. I get up. You know, I could go somewhere else where it's three dollars or four dollars or free. But how much time and money am I going to spend in gas, bus, or Uber yeah, that's to get point. there? Parking, parking tickets to get there. You know, you could go to an open mic and get a $80 parking ticket somewhere. Yeah. You know, that's going to add to your open mic cost. And, you know, if you spend, you know, Uber is really good for me because I spend, you know, it's $3 to get from here up to the comedy store. It's $4 to park at, to park at the comedy store. Yeah. So, you know, uh, what it's, it's the, a lot of times just taking an Uber is just better. But anyway, so... The I you know you're gonna have to take five bucks all right you know you're spending money and maybe you're broke and maybe you're poor but you know let's say you book your first gigs and you're making money you're gonna make all that money back right away my one of my first uh, comedy first one of the first times I got flown out of state I got paid four hundred bucks oh, nice. that was nice so that's a little bit of my open mic fees for a year or something like that <laughs> right. that's what that is you know but you know and the thing is when you're in L A you know, there's these, everyone here, as soon as you say you want to be something, a comedian, an actor, an actress, a waitress, <laughs> what's that old joke? They say, uh, we don't call them actress, we don't call them uh, actresses now, want to be called actors instead, and then, but we, we, but in L.A., we just call them waitresses. No. It's, the, it's an old joke. It's not my joke. It's yeah. somebody's joke, but anyway, you know, um, no matter what you want to be, there's an industry here in L.A., especially in L.A., to make money off of you. And the open mic is like the beginner's uh, first free dose of heroin for you, you know. But you need to get over being nervous. 
you know, having a weird guy scream at you in the audience, having a crazy person uh, yell at you while you're doing your set. You need yeah. to get over all that in order to be a performer anyway. So, you know, you're just going to have to go. And I had friends, and the first, your first year of open mics is going to be a lonely place. For some people, it depends on your, you know, who you are, what you are. If you're a, uh, uh, a very social, beautiful person, then maybe not so much. But uh, the, it's going to depend on your social acumen. But, you know, it can be. The first year in comedy can be really lonely doing those mics. Oh, brutal, yeah. Brutal, brutal, hard, hard, hard. If you can make it through four years, I don't know how many people I can count in people on my one hand that are still here, you know. Yeah. Unfortunately, some of the craziest, most destructive people have stuck around. And some of the, in fact, I have one stalker that stuck around. A guy's been stalking me for years. And uh, What did you do? I didn't do anything to him. I brought... I had young, pretty girlfriends, and he could not stand that I had young, pretty girlfriends. Oh, really? He, he, would, he would just freak out over it. And uh, uh, he still comes to open mics now every time he's able to get, like, a pretty girl to accompany him to an open mic or to a show, and he thinks I'll be there. He'll go there, try to show him, look, you know, I'm with a girl. You know, it's just like, man, I won't even take my girlfriends around comedians anymore. I think. Wait, were you bringing them up on stage uh, with you? No, 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 that? no. I would just have them there, and he was just so angry that I had young, pretty girlfriends. Listen, I'm no great, uh, great lover or anything, but occasionally I will have a nice girl that's uh, – a little bit young for me around and uh, just I love them with all of my heart and people say, wait, how do you go out with girls that are that age? And just, just love them with all your heart, man. And just soon get rid of them and understand that pretty soon your old guy novelty is going to wear off. Going out with this older guy, your novelty is going to wear off and they're going to leave you and maybe take your heart with them when they go. But he was so angry at that, he still stalks me. And he's pretty much done because I almost – and the thing is I can't beat him up because yeah. then what happens then? Then someone's going to hire me somewhere and say, oh, Mark just knocked this guy's teeth out. You know, I heard Mark knock yeah. somebody's teeth out. Don't be – you know, before I was doing comedy, I was doing jujitsu and kickboxing, okay? So uh, I, could, I could take care of myself, but, you know, I can't ever hit anyone. Well, you can invite him on stage, then hit him and call it performance <laughs> art. Performance art, right. You know, I don't want that to have a reputation of uh, hitting somebody or losing my temper or anything like that. So <laughs> yeah. it's like I can't do that, you know. And I said, oh, wait outside in the parking lot. But no, nope. you know, it's like I, I, and I, and I really I don't want to hurt anybody. But I used to be that guy. I used to get in fights with people. But uh, I don't anymore. But anyway, so you, you – most people drop out. How long have Pretty you been, quick, too. How long have you been going to open my Just four years. Four years. Okay, yeah. so you're a veteran. So the uh, – are you starting to get on book shows and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. I think like like a year or two ago I was maybe getting two to four shows a month, and mm -hmm. now I'm kind of creeping up a little bit. Um, and, you know, they're mostly like just shows that right. my friends run, and that's how it works at first. Right. But, you just uh, – you just start out and you uh, you got to go up and their friends run them and, and you maybe get a little bit of a reputation as being funny and people will put you up. Yeah. One of the best things to do is to start your own show somewhere. Yeah, that's, that's great too. I did that early on and that uh, that kind of helped me. I've done that. I've done that too and I've done uh, – and some people, you know, also the thing is uh, a lot of people, when you put them on your show, they'll put you on theirs. Right. And But a lot of people won't. Yeah. But, you know, the more professional they are, they usually do. But yeah. there are always exceptions, you know. Yeah, that that's tough, man. I don't know how I feel about that. Like, especially yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I guess I mean, I, I don't want to like go in and like put someone on my show and then feel like they owe me something. Like, yeah. Like I, I genuinely genuinely would want to book someone that I like their comedy. You like their comedy. But I I guess that is really tough when you have like close friends you're hanging out with all the time and then maybe necessarily don't like their comedy. That's for, hard. For some people, listen, they just understand uh the I he put me on my show. I if people put me on their show, I'm always looking look out for them trying to get them up somewhere yeah. you know if they're if they're doing stuff especially if they kick me paid work 
you know, I'm, I'm, you know, on it for them, and I'm trying to get them up in every place I can. And, uh, yeah. you know, I, that's how I am, and that's how I try to be, you know, and I've eventually, you know, if you got me up somewhere, eventually I am trying to get you up. It may take me a year, but, you know, I'm going to get you up somewhere. I'll put you up on my show. I'll get another show yeah. that I'm going to do eventually. I should, but, oh, sorry. I was just going to say, I should keep in mind that um, when I was – really inexperienced and just a year in like someone threw me a bone and put me on their show so uh-huh. uh i should uh keep that in mind and, and maybe give someone else a chance to uh even yeah. if i don't necessarily connect with what they're doing so tell tell what more more what are the good open mics and what are the good ones far away and outside of la and what are the good ones uh, well, in I, la right now oh man um well, that's the thing. I don't mind driving uh, farther away from Mike where I'm going to get an honest audience, mm-hmm. or even if it's an all-comic audience, um, mm-hmm. you, you just end up meeting cool new people right. and doing longer sets, and so I'm all about driving to San Diego, or I just went to Ventura recently, went to the Red Cove open mic, I had a great time, um, but in LA, uh, it's just a lot of three-minute mics, so I'm not as thrilled to come up here as often. Um, and there's that competitive nature too, where it just I, I really do feel pressured, and it feels more like an audition when I go to certain mics, uh, whether it's uh, uh, Meltdown or like um, Chat or, or Chatterbox is out of the way. Uh, that's what I was going to bring up too. That's the one lottery that I don't mind. Is it's, Meltdown uh, on on. Yeah, Meltdown and Chatterbox do the same thing, where they announce all the they names. They announce up they it's a it's a lotto. But they announce who's going to go up and who isn't. So if you didn't get picked, you can leave. Yeah. Also, is a little bit of there's a, you believe it or not, there's such things as prestigious open mics yeah. and open mics that are the bottom of the barrel. Right. And so, a lot the one at Nerd Melt is actually considered kind of good. Yeah. If you go up there, you know, uh, it's a, at least a little bit of uh, and you can see fairly good comics. Yeah. To go there. Yeah, know? it's kind of it's gone a little downhill in the last year. Like not not as many people stick around anymore. So right. It really empties out once the comedians right. are not called. Once you announce like, who's there, let's get out of here. And it depends on what mic is nearby after that. What's really available on that day? On Mondays, I used to do the the uh, I used to do like three. I used to do. Like rock paper? Or, uh... Yeah, I could do, I'd do rock paper. I'd go across the street, try to get up and nerd melt. Yeah. Then I'd go down to El Cid, which I understand oh, yeah. is gone. Oh, is it? And, yeah. Oh, i got to update that. I think that one's gone. You might want to check it. Yeah, but, check uh, it. That guy hated me, though. He would put me up really late. But I could do those three, and then I could do that, and then sometimes I'd be on the Crispy Comedy Show at 11 oh, o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe I could do four mics and a show that day. Yeah. So I'd try to do that. But, Chris you know, is great. You get Chris is wonderful. You get exhausted uh, on that, and then uh, the uh, there's you know the, there's so many there's so many mics. What was that one in the valley that was actually in a documentary? What was that one? Man, I can't even remember what it was called. But you know now you see in the Louis C.K. show where he talks about an open mic, and then uh, you never saw that episode. And then where? So. Yeah, and then there's uh, uh, I think there's a in this new show I'm dying up here which I haven't seen yet about the comedy oh, store. Holmes. Oh no no I'm sorry not Pete Holmes. Supposedly there's an open mic in that as well, mm. you know, and there's always been a kind of an open mic situation at the comedy store, but I don't even I don't even really bother to go up there at the comedy store. Yeah. It's just like or even try to go there. Maybe I should, and I need to start heading more towards the clubs. But I just love, my thing now is just getting outside of L.A. and all these places, Victorville and Riverside yeah. and all these, all of these places outside of L.A., these little, little towns, because you get a real audience, so refreshing. My favorite audience was, uh, was in Alaska. You know, there's actually a video of me performing in Alaska. I did 45 minutes. Oh, wow. Very, very nice crowd, real people. And uh, but you know a lot of also you're talking about you know looking at comics whether you like them or not put them on the show. Yeah. There comes a point where is a booker on a show, you don't even listen to the comedian all that much. You're like seeing does the audience like them? Is the audience loud? No. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a huge thing. I mean, if I don't like them but the audience is loving it, then what, what the hell am I? So, my yeah. Beef? 
what's your beef? You know, yeah. let them put up. And basically at my shows, I would put people up just because I liked they had a weird name or there was something quirky about them or strange. And I thought, and I also try to put on like weird performance artists also yeah. and poets at my shows. Uh, there's a guy named Arlen Lawson who's this brilliant poet who I put up at my show. And it's a little rough for him. He doesn't understand waiting around all this time and stuff like that. But uh, he's a great poet. He's an incredibly talented guy. And, uh, you know, putting people up, I just try to give people a shot. Give them a chance, yeah. you know, to go up there and do well. And a lot of times people really, really do, you know, do really well. And some people just have a funny personality, irregardless. They may be slightly crazy in a good way. They all kind of have to be crazy to be a comic anyway. Yeah. You have to kind of, you know, and you have to also be have a little bit crazy and, and overestimate yourself, believing there's something about you that people really need to see and hear. Right. Something special about you. You have to have that belief inside somewhere on some level. You know, some of us may have been taught, you know, by our parents. A lot of uh, comedians come from very dysfunctional alcoholic families. I joke about going to... Uh, uh, you know, oh, comedian open mics, and I'm around, you know, completely untreated adult children of alcoholics. It just seems like it's all, uh, that's true of me, but I've noticed it very, very true of, of people and family. People come from very dysfunctional families yeah. in uh, comedy, and I, yeah, you know, there is never, ever going to be an end to uh, my material that I will get from talking about dysfunctional families. So anyway, continue with the uh, the reviews. Oh. Just for now. General review. Like, name some that are good. Name some that... Oh, man. This will expire. I should, I should uh, just start looking through my actual uh, list. So actual can, notes. Yeah, it's because it's hard to just think of them off the bat. You know, again, my advice is to go find the, find the mics where there's just, you know, poets and artists and uh, musicians because they don't want to laugh. Yeah. And if you can make them laugh, it's good, but you'll get a much more of an honest, you know, thing from a group of strangers. Yeah. Well, I just had, like, an incident last night at the uh, – it was a mixed mic, and I feel like it's kind of 50-50. Like, sometimes the comedians and musicians don't connect. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, you know, a lot of hotshot comedians come in and say something offensive in a family restaurant and leaves a bad taste in right. their mouth, and they end up banning the comedians. and. So I, I get that angle, and then at the same time, there's also uh, uh, there's other instances where um, comedians are performing, and and uh, the person running the show is very disrespectful and talking down to them, like, all right, it's time for the comedians, but we'll get back to the music, and <laughs> just like very passive aggressive. And we had like there's a woman last night that was like telling us how to do our jokes. And, oh yeah, uh, that kind of thing. So, but um, but every once in a while, you go to a mixed mic that's like totally harmonious and like everyone just kind of compliments each other and it's a blast. Yeah, you know, and that's that's good. And then it could also be very deceptive. You can take that same material that your friends laugh at. Yeah. And uh, go in front of a group of strangers and no one's gonna laugh. You right, know? right. I've seen lots of comedians come into open mics thinking they're hot shit, bringing five or six people with them and their friends all laugh. And, and never notice that no one else in the room is laughing besides their friends. Right. You know? And uh, and most people aren't prepared for the long haul, too, that it's going to take. Like you said, four years. You know, yeah, I've been at it four years, too. You know, people come and think, oh, it's going to be easy. I'm so talented. I'm so this. I'm so that. Yeah. And then they're doing bringer shows for five years. Well, that's what throws just, them. That's still what, not getting a paid gig anywhere. Yeah, they think it's going to happen so quick because someone's blowing smoke up their ass. Right. And, with the bringer shows and. Yeah. Like I'm on the I'm on the big stage now. I I just I just opened. Uh, right. For, uh, Sarah Silverman dropped right. in. Uh, I was right. on the same show and all this stuff. Yeah. You know, get it get it straight. A bringer show is an open mic. Yeah. That's all it is. It's an open mic that's more wise, expensive yeah. than you very would be paying. Open and you, mic. you know, a very expensive open mic. Again, we were paying 30 or 40 bucks for the, the stage time. But, you know, I put down the hog at there. But, you know, it's a mic. It's open. You can go. You can do your time. You can do 10 minutes, 10 bucks. Okay. You know, it's as far as running a uh, comedy club goes, $10 isn't really going to help them pay their bills or anything else. There's a lot of expenses there, yeah. you know. 
So, uh, you know, you're negative about that. But, you know, the Ha Ha Cafe is it's still a good mic. You're going to get up. Right. You know, the thing is there, though, you could wait forever at that mic. Yeah. I go to Lotto's, and if I'm not up the first 10 minutes, I say, you know, I take my name out of there. The first half hour, hour, I can only look at so many emails, check my email. And also, when you're at the open mic waiting around, you know, take time to, you know, try to meet some other people, you know, and network a little bit and yeah. get online and get another gig or get a book gig so you can get out of the goddamn open mic scene. You know, whenever I'm in an open mic, I'm on Messenger on Facebook trying to get booked on something because yeah. I'm like, this is hell. Yeah, that's why I feel like the benefit of uh, venturing out somewhere else has uh, kind of worked out where I've just... Yeah, sure. I, dr I drove like two hours, but I ended up getting a booking from someone I just met like yeah. a week ago, which yeah. is great. And yeah. Because I spent the time, I hung out at the mic, and I talked to people after and had a good time socializing. Right. And sometimes it's hard. You don't feel like doing that. But uh, if I'm going to make the drive, I'll, I'll try you to may like, as well. yeah, hang out. Get on a show. Get, you know, make a friend. Because, you, know, uh, you know, comedy friends are comedy friends, and real friends are real friends. And yeah. there's everything in between in the comedy world. But uh, it's it's like, uh, you know, I have certain people that I put up like 30 times at shows who now hate me. And I have other people. <laughs> You're booking me too much. I'm booking you too ass. much. Get off my ass. Yeah. And then I have other people that I book 30 times and they put on the show every, every time. And, and they're, uh, they don't help me get up anywhere. Yeah. And, you know, but maybe they, you know, maybe they don't know how. Maybe they're, they can't. Maybe they have the foggiest idea even how to do that. It took me a long time to learn how to get other people up and get myself up. But, you know, I try to pull for people as much as I can, the little that I have. And I'm always trying to be nice to everyone and give everyone a chance, irregardless, and help just strangers get up. Just because... You know, I think because I like to do it, I like to be nice to people. I like to help people out. And you also hope that somewhere down the line, they're going to at least have a positive view of you yeah. and be, you know, trying to get you. Although some people, you know, I, I get them on this show or that show just for whatever reason. And just because I know someone's looking for a certain kind of comedian. And they'll just be like Sonati to me. It's like, you know, what, are you, what are you doing putting me up, you know, just to... Don't even say thank you, you know, mm. and I just let it go, you know, I'm like, all right. Some people think, oh, I'm a big star now. Everyone wants me, you know, I guess that's what they think. And mm. I don't know, you know, who knows? Some people are very unappreciative, but, you know, it's not really why I do it. I do it because I'm nice and I like to help people. I remember what it was like when I was at open mics going around with a great guy named Gary Sugarman. He used to drive me around everywhere and his in his car I was a big fan he was one of the best comics in LA yeah. and he was so unusual and offensive sometimes people wouldn't put him up and eventually he quit it was too bad uh -huh. but uh, he used to drive me for a year you know and he was like even when I didn't want to go he was there let's go let's go yeah. let's go every every night but so many people drop out and so many people drop out of comedy right here in Hollywood where I live and out of acting I, right here in Hollywood where I live there's always a bunch of junk on the sidewalk and if somebody is just giving up, going back to Ohio, you know, yeah. and just to give it up the give it up the go. So what's your, what's your advice about like open mic? Like if you were telling people to start at open mic, oh, what man. would you tell them that we haven't already said? I guess I would think if they're just trying to do it as like a bucket list thing, just to, mm -hmm. they just want to challenge themselves and see if they could do it. Then it might be fun to make a production out of it and do your laugh factory or your, you mm -hmm. know, if you want to do bring a show that way, a one and done kind of thing. Right. And make it a big deal, all your family comes out. You know, and obviously I don't want to recommend a bringer show, but I feel like that's the only thing. If it was just like your one, right. your one shot, right. then you might as well maybe go big. But um, if you're thinking about doing it for the long haul and you're you're really scared about doing it, you can find a low pressure open mic. Like that's why I went with Marty's because I knew it was just gonna right. be like a whorehouse and just like yeah, it's, it's gonna be ugly. I'm gonna I'm just gonna it's gonna be ugly. <laughs> it's gonna be an orgasm and get the hell out of there. Um, and uh, yeah, and there was like maybe two people listening and, and it was totally fine. I'm glad I did it. There's like. Uh, I think South's comedy it feels kind of similar. It's pretty right. grim, pretty grim in there, but pretty grim. it's a good place to just get it done. It's a stage. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I don't know because I I feel like I started on a lot of like really 
tough mics too. Like I was going to the Palace, uh, the Chinese restaurant with a bunch of comics that did not want to laugh. Right. That was tough. But you want to do all kinds of mics, I think, starting out and, uh, yeah. and not get too comfortable anywhere. Right. Kind of keep challenging yourself. Right. And it's always good because, you know, some social pressure or something like that and some mic or somebody will be there that you hate or hates you or makes you uncomfortable or an ex-girlfriend or right. whatever will be there. And uh, or some girl you tried to date and, you know, rejected you or whatever is going to be there and you need to perform. And, you know, those same pressures are going to be there if you're working in a comedy club. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, your ex-girlfriend's going to be on before you, you know, and uh, or whatever. And uh, she broke your heart or you broke her heart or, or whatever. I've seen actually at comedy shows where comedians have been who've slept with each other, have cussed at each other, you oh, know, I, before they go up on one's hosting and the other is is an ex of theirs and they'll have they'll exchange words on the stage and uh it's it's you know it's rough stuff so any kind of a mic you can get into in any kind of uncomfortable situation you can get into good for you you're gonna need it yeah you know when you get out there you know someone like when uh what's his face tells this story uh mark Marin tells a story about getting flown to australia early on in his career and the people spent all this money to fly him out in a hotel room and yeah. everything else and he just bombed for like an hour and a half he couldn't get the audience to laugh and when he came back he's like you know he was going to quit he was going to quit comedy right? Right, right and you know they just some people just flew me to alaska and they spent money to get me up there and meals and transportation and a hotel room for me what if i would have bombed yeah. you know you gotta handle that kind of pressure any kind of pressure and waiting around, being tired, being lonely, being sad, being uh, physically ill, you know, just going there and doing the show because you don't want a reputation of somebody that doesn't show up to gigs. Yeah, oh, man, and that's the tough thing about stand-up is that you have to do horrible, too. That's part yeah, of it. And part you, of it. You only get better if you, if you bomb and you'll know how to deal with it the next bombing time. Bombing is part of the process, and you need to do your bombing at the open mics, yeah. not at the clubs. Yeah, try you know? not to. Try uh, not to. It's going to happen. It'll happen anyway. But. It's going to happen <laughs> anyway, but, you know, and I've gone out. See, the thing is now, you know, I'll go out, I'll be in Riverside doing a gig, and I'm not getting paid anything. I'm getting paid 40 bucks and some stale french fries and some chicken wings or whatever, and or, or getting paid nothing, yeah. you know, or 10 bucks in gas money, you know, and that's all I'm getting paid. Or maybe a stale Diet Coke, you know, is all I'm getting paid. But it varies from time to time. And, uh, you know, I've gone out and you start to bomb. But after a while, after four years of open mics, you know how to get out of it you know what's wrong yeah. you know where to take the audience you know to go back and try to reconnect with the audience or whatever it is you've got to do you yeah know? or even if you don't know how, it, you're still having a hard time dealing with it you could definitely not show that it's affecting you too you can yeah. still be confident up there or fake confidence right just get through it fake it till you make it you know like i'll go out it's like in la is is a democrat town so, like, I tell a bunch of Trump jokes and a bunch of Hillary jokes. Oh, so in L.A., you've got to do the Trump jokes first right. and that and endear yourself to the Democrats and the Hillary fans. And then it kind of gives you permission to tell the Hillary jokes, okay? Yeah, you bring well, both. Some people it won't. But then when I get outside of L.A., you go to Riverside or Alaska, you're in Trump country. Right. So you start with the Hillary jokes first, then that gives you permission to tell the Trump jokes right. after, so it switches. You got to know your, you got to know your audience because you can get into trouble going out and just starting out with the Trump jokes. So you're going to be in L.A. telling all these Trump jokes. All the Democrats are going to laugh and love it. Then you go out into Riverside, you get all these Trump voters, yeah. and they're going to be mad at you for the same jokes. So you know you got to know your audience, and there's a million other things too. You got to know when to be dirty, know when not to be dirty, know when you're being too dirty. If you see they're laughing at your dirty jokes, may move in that direction and you're set, you know? But anyway, thanks a lot for coming out, Marty. No problem. This has been Pod Potatoes with Mark Selzer. It's up on Stitcher. It's up on uh, all over. All over. It's up on iTunes now. 
it's up everywhere. And if you just go to my Facebook page, you have a website where you do your open mics? Yes. Reviews? Yeah, it's uh, MartyWurst.com, M A R T Y W U R S T.com. And I have Open Mic Comedy uh, Los Angeles, is my place. And I encourage you, continue to encourage you to put your reviews up there. I will. And that's Open Mic Comedy Los Angeles. I work really hard to keep the pornos found off of that site. Is that a full time job? <laughs> full time job. <laughs> Which one of the reasons it's it's growing? I get ten people a day joining it. Oh, nice! So uh, it's it's a it's a pretty nice. It's one of the pages that I did that took off. So in my I can be found, of course, on uh, YouTube at uh, mark youtube.com forward slash mark selzer m e r k s e l z e r. Twitter same thing. Facebook uh, just just put my name in Mark Selzer. Usually, I still have room on my regular regular everyday uh, Facebook for you to talk to me. I have 500 more slots left and those are going fast. So oh, wow. uh, I have 500 more slots. I usually allowed 5,000 on that. Other than that, I'll just be the fan page. So thanks a lot. Thank you. And what? And your website is what again? What is uh, that again? MartyWurst.com. MartyWurst.com. W U R S T. Yeah, like Bratwurst, Liverwurst. Good, good name for a comic. All right.